Hey, hey, what is up guys? Brandon here from Go Headquarters bringing you the full breakdown for today's workout. We are getting so darn close to Murph. And if you can't tell, we've got some themes trending this week. So if you've been with us this week, guys, our daily warm up is an 800 meter run, three rounds of Cindy. Remember, a round of Cindy is five pull-ups, 10 push-ups, and 15 air squats. So if you've got a pull-up bar, jump up there, give me five pull-ups. If you don't have a pull-up bar, the substitute for this is gonna be 10 bicep curls. That's gonna be with dumbbells or a barbell, guys. Either way is fair game. So we just wanna get those pulling muscles going. Obviously our push-ups, we need to hit the deck. Um, we've got our hands just under our shoulders. They're shoulder width apart, nice tight plank. Otherwise, elbows stay tucked in. And then we press all the way up from chest contact with the floor. So make sure you are getting all the way down, all the way up. And then of course for your air squat, heels are about shoulder width apart, toes are slightly turned out, hips back and down, knees out, arms and chest up nice and tall in that bottom position, getting below parallel and standing all the way up. So one run for 800 meters, three rounds of five pull-ups, 10 push-ups, 15 air squats. We're gonna see a little bit more of that activity later in the workout today. Then let's go into three rounds of, and we need a band and maybe some dumbbells or a barbell for this next one. Three rounds, we're gonna do 15 pull-aparts. So for the uh, pull-aparts and bent over row, I'm sorry, I need to get that all out. Three rounds, 15 pull-aparts, 15 bent over row. So I've got my pull-up band, grabbing this thing about shoulder width apart, st straight arms, stiff elbows, and I'm just gonna pull this thing apart until it hits me in the chest, and I'm squeezing my shoulder blades. So we wanna feel this kinda of through the back of the shoulder area and between the shoulder blades. You'll also feel your triceps a little bit because they're keeping that elbow lock out. So 15 of those, bent over row. Again, I'm demoing with dumbbells. I'm trying not to do too much with a barbell because I'm assuming a lot of you guys don't have barbells, but feel free to do this with a barbell. So I am hinged over, my lumbar curve is visible, my weight's back in the heels. My knees are just comfortable. If I bend my knees too much, See how that changes my spine angle and I end up too upright? We wanna be bent over, so make sure you push your knees back far enough that we're approaching parallel to the floor. And then we're gonna keep the weights really close to you, pull towards your belly button, and squeeze the heck out of your shoulder blades. Shoulders should be down and back. It's like you're trying to touch your elbows together behind your back, right? So from the back, we're really getting that squeeze. We don't wanna just pull with our arms. We wanna make sure we're pulling with our back muscles, okay? So three rounds, and that's for quality, 15 pull-aparts, 15 bent over row. And then we're moving on into our strength phase, our bigger strength phase. We're gonna do four rounds of this. We're gonna do 10 deadlifts and then a pressing exercise. So now ideally, our RX prescription for the day would be 10 deadlifts and then 10 handstand push-ups. Now, obviously not everyone is ready for 10 handstand push-ups. So to scale that, we can go to 10 hand release push-ups, or if you just want to, for fun, you can do three wall walks, also known as wall climbs. That's assuming you guys have a wall that you're willing to climb up and down and scuff up. I don't recommend doing it in the dining room. So let's go over the deadlift. Again, we're trying to do 10 of these. If you've got a barbell, kettlebell, any of that will do. I'm gonna kind of tilt my dumbbells down to offset the height difference here. So you'll see that I will intentionally do like an angle to that, so I'm letting my wrist flop. So my feet are about hip width apart. I'm gonna stand up nice and tall. First thing I'm gonna do is hip hinge, keeping my knees straight for a moment. So there's a knee delay there. So I'm gonna hinge over when I get my hands just past my knees, that's gonna trigger my knee bend and I'm gonna come all the way down and tap the ground. Now in this bottom position, my hips are just above my knees, my lumbar curve is still visible, I've made contact with the floor and then I'm gonna squeeze my butt and drive all the way back up to upright. Okay, so I am keeping those weights close to my shin line. What we don't wanna do is you know, send these things out in front of you, that's gonna kinda pull you forward and probably round you out. And then we also don't wanna just turn this into a squat. See how now I'm not hip hinging, I'm just squatting. So we don't wanna do that either. We wanna make sure we get that hinge initiated. Okay, so 10 deadlifts. And we're gonna pair that with 10 handstand push-ups. So for handstand push-ups, 
If you have a wall and the prerequisite skill to kick up against a wall and do 10 inverted handstand push-ups, that's your jam today. If you don't have that, but you wanna do the inverted push-up, here's what we're gonna do. We need a, in this case, I've got a low box. We need a chair, an ottoman, a bench. Get creative, look around, you've got something. Maybe it's the tailgate of your truck. That's probably a little high. So what I'm gonna do for this, is I'm gonna put my toes right in the center of my object. So I'm in kind of an inverted push-up, right? Like an incline push-up. From here, I'm gonna walk in as far as I can, getting my hips above my shoulders. So from here, I'm gonna try to do a vertical action. I'm gonna bring my head to the floor safely, or a pad, or a towel, or a pillow, and then press up. Okay, so now what we don't wanna do here, guys, is get inverted and then end up tucking like this and just doing something like this. We wanna keep our hips above our shoulders in as much of a vertical inversion as possible, right? Because if we were to kick upside down on a wall, we'd really be upside down. So that's kind of the scaled handstand push-up version. Now we've also got a hand release push-up. So if we're not inverting at all, we don't have the equipment, we're not ready for that strength-wise, cool. We're gonna go back to our push-up, which we did in the warm-up. But now, when we come down, we've gotta release our hands off the ground for a moment before pressing back up. Okay, it's just a quick flash. You don't need to raise them real big or do anything crazy. We just need to get them off the floor. I mean, if I can slide a credit card under your hand, cool, you raised them enough. So that's gonna ensure that you've got full contact to the floor and you didn't short the range of motion. The thing to watch out for on this is that when you re-engage, people tend to relax their core and start to worm up. So during this flash of my hands, I'm keeping my legs stiff and my core stiff so that when I contact my hands to the floor and push, my whole plank, my whole body comes up as one unit. I'm not just doing the worm, okay? So all of that for quality, for strength, we're gonna do four rounds, 10 deadlifts, and you can add weight as you go if you've got weight available, and then 10 handstand push-ups, whether that's against a wall or the feet on a box type of scale. Or if we're not doing the inverted handstand push-up, we're gonna do hand release push-ups. And then as a third fun alternative, you could do three wall walks if you know what that is. I'm not gonna go over that in today's breakdown. So once we're through all of that, guys, let's move on to conditioning. Again, you're gonna see kind of some themes here with what's been going on this week that is very much on purpose. So we've always got a plan. Here's what we're getting into, guys. Five rounds every three minutes. So this is a 15 minute routine, right? Five rounds or five cycles every three minutes. You're gonna do 10 plate burpees, 100 meter run, and 15 thrusters or wall balls, okay? And then you're gonna rest with remaining time. So you wanna go as fast as you can on the burpees, right into the run, right into 15 thrusters, and then rest with that remaining time. So what the heck is a plate burpee? Well, let's say I don't have a plate. I'm gonna get creative. Maybe I've got a little step, I've got a, you know, some sort of riser of some kind. I'm gonna be kind of right in front of that object. I'm gonna do my normal burpee, so chest and thighs to the floor. I don't wanna smash my face or nose on this object, right? We want our teeth. When we pop up, we're just gonna jump with two feet onto the object and then right back off for the next burpee. Okay, so it might look something like that. So notice I didn't raise my hands over my head, right? So normally we would raise our hands over our head for the jump. We're replacing that with jumping on the plate, or in this case, the step. Now, if you really don't have anything to jump on, just do regular burpees, guys, no big deal. So the moment I hit my 10th rep, boom, there's 10, I'm hitting the door running, 100 meters, okay? That should be a fast lap. We're gonna be hauling some booty on that. When we get in from the run, we're gonna go right into 15 thrusters, full squat, full press overhead with a really light pair of dumbbells or a really light barbell. And what I want you guys to think about is if you were doing this with a wall ball, right? So the RX scenario, fellas, you'd only be using a 20 pound wall ball. Ladies, you'd only be using a 14 pound wall ball. So that's really light. I want it to be light and fast because remember, we're gonna be repeating this on the clock. So 
we should be able to do 15 thrusters unbroken on all five sets. So if it's something where you're like, ooh, yeah, I might not be able to go unbroken, it's too heavy. I would rather it be too light where you can go too fast. And if you were gonna score this, your score would be your lowest, your slowest, excuse me, your slowest round. So similar to what we did the other day with the run repeats, I want you to go with the fastest repeatable pace, which is pretty high percentage, right? We should be going out at 95% and seeing if we can hold on to that. Okay, so let's review. Five rounds, every three minutes, you're gonna do 10 plate burpees, 100 meter run, 15 thrusters, rest with remaining time. Should be a good one. And then, final task of the day, we're gonna cash out with an accumulated 75 hip thrusts. So, I'm gonna show like an ideal scenario here, but you guys may not have this equipment. Don't worry about that. You can go with what you've got. So for our hip thrusts, I'm gonna lay back on my little 12 inch box here, and I'm also gonna put my feet on an object in order to get my hip thrust done, okay? Now, what these objects are buying me is just more range of motion. So if I put my feet on the floor, I'm not getting as deep into the bottom of my hip thrust. Is that the worst thing ever? No, we're just doing accessory work here. So if my feet are, or excuse me, if my shoulders are elevated, we want my shoulder blades trapped on the object. So maybe it's on the side of a bench, maybe it's off the side of the couch, maybe it's on an ottoman and it's braced up against the couch, whatever. Um, knees are bent about 90 degrees. I'm gonna keep my chin looking in that direction, like keep my eyes here. I don't wanna lift my head up, so chin to chest, eyes neutral that way, and I'm gonna tuck my tailbone under. I'm squeezing the heck out of my butt cheeks, pause at the top, come down as low as you can, and do it again, okay? So now, if your feet are elevated, that just gets to, you know, add a little bit more range of motion. Now, this could be higher as well. I could maybe be on two equal height objects, and that would be cool. Um, and if we don't have anything for the shoulders, no big deal, guys. Let's put our feet up on the ottoman or the couch. You know, let's just elevate something, whether it's your shoulders or your feet or both, Let's try to get some elevation into those 75 reps today. And I don't care how you partition it. The goal is to accumulate 75. So I'm not expecting one big set of 75. I want good quality reps. I don't want that to fade. So I would rather you slow down, break it up, and squeeze tighter back there versus just burn through them. Okay, you're, you're gonna get a bigger return on your investment. So I hope you guys enjoy this workout. This is a really fun one. So really give it your all on that five rounds of every three minutes worth of tasks. Um, go fast on that. Obviously you can see that we've got a lot of running and push up type action and squat type action this week through the workouts. Um, just fine tune that Murph machine that we are building. So stay safe, stay fit, keep punching. We will see you next time.